Sure. Um, yeah. No, speaking of it, NIL, uh, Mackenzie Mbaco certainly will be pulling in the chains, but more importantly, what has that done for Indiana? It, 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 they land a gigantic recruit in, in Mackenzie Mbaco, not only in what he brings in his play and uh, what he can add to the team, but it says a ton about Indiana's ability to recruit now, about sure. being able to land these guys, be beating Kansas for a recruit. There's just so many of those things that go in to landing a, a guy like Ibaco. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's just it, it's very interesting to try to put like Mike Woodson's recruiting performance in perspective. But I think the one thing that you that stands out is there are not many players for whom they cannot compete. I mean, I think you can criticize the fact that the stream of commitments is slow or, you know, that, that you go periods where, you know, that's the first high school recruit they've got in the calendar year. You know, like, I mean, like you go back, it was, the, as far as I know, the last, last high school guy they got, um, a, you know, scholarship high school player that they added uh, was Malik Renew. And that's, I think, April. Um, if I'm not mistaken, of 22. So they go from April of 22 to May of 23 with zero high school commitments. But they get, you know, a fringe five-star in Renew um, if he wasn't actually a five-star camera. I think he was, like, right on that border. Uh, and then a true five-star in, in Baco. In Baco. Um, and that's pretty remarkable. Um, that uh, that but, but it's like, again, you get that – you get kids on campus – and you get Mike Woodson explained to somebody how he can make them an NBA player, um, and you have a chance, and you can beat. And that's just again, if you if you can beat Kansas for a guy like that, then that means you you can get anybody. No one is beyond your reach, and that's I think a really important um, piece there. He's not an Indiana kid. There's no way in which they had some kind of advantage on Mbako that nobody else had. Um, you know, he was that's a wide open recruitment. That's a kid coming from the East Coast. They had you know. Kansas had every right, you know, just just as much, uh, you know, reason to think they could get him. Louisville had as much reason to think they could get him. He was committed to Duke for a while. Um, you know, that was kind of like an even playing field. There's there's nothing. It's there's as far as I know, there's no advantage Indiana had geographically, connections wise, whatever. It was just Indiana made its pitch and won. Um, and that again, that says a lot for Mike Woodson's ability that when you get those kids in, he can close them. He can sell them. Um, you know, again, you, you wonder about the steadiness of the stream of commitments, the lack thereof, um, the fact that it just seems like they kind of go away in recruiting for a while. You don't see them, you know, land anybody for, you know, again, more than a year. Um, but when they come back, they come back with force and go get somebody who, you know, they're not supposed to get. I mean, I, I, I didn't think they were, they were beating Kansas. You know, um, you know. Obviously, they did a heck of a lot better job than I knew. And obviously, not without following it with the same degree of, um, you know, in depth. Um, now that I'm covering the NBA, but you know, I saw like top ten players, six eight wing. You know, looking at Kansas. Okay, well, he's going to Kansas then. You know, like you just generally kind of presume that that if it's, you know, that the, like Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, Carolina. If those guys want you, you're probably going there. You know, you're, you're going to one of the four. Um, and so I kind of figured, all right. Kansas, you know, if Indiana finished second, good for them. You know, they got him on campus. That's nice. You know, they they made a crack at it, but he'll go to Kansas. But he didn't. Um, and so, you know, changes the roster dramatically. Um, you know, it gives them – I think Zach put it this way. I mean, they haven't had a guy at that position with that much promise in a long time. Uh, a 3-4 type um, with that kind of like – I mean, who, who was that? Who was this last guy? This guy is – He's a different animal. I mean, he's a physical sure. specimen. He looks like he's 23 or 4 years old. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, I mean, he, he looks, he looks like a man. Facial hair, though. You can make yourself look a lot older, you know, if you if you got that going on for you. Try never. Uh, so, um. so there's there's that. Um, but it's he brings a lot to this to this team and now they have they're just I say they're one piece short. They may not be a that full piece short. Who knows? Game cops who 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 will have on sure. here a little bit. He could, you know, he's a shooter. He maybe he's that guy. Does CJ Gunn step up? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we don't Caleb know. Banks. Caleb Banks, man, that's a nice little player. So, 
Um, um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, it's obviously the the big issue for this team is going to be just it, its development. You know, it, who is going to become like nobody is that the guy they need to be right now. It's a question of whether they're going to be that guy in November and December and January and February and March. Uh, you know, it's it, you know, obviously, you know, you, you didn't see the Kel where that you're going to need to see if he's if they're going to be there. But, hey, it's there. You know, there, there's potential there. Seven foot guy who can really shoot the ball. Um, Mackenzie Bacco is obviously going to be a true freshman. So you're, you're, you, you don't know what that, you know, how quickly he's going to translate. Um, but if he does, you know, uh, he's got a chance to be really good. You know, Xavier Johnson, are you going to get the Xavier Johnson you got at the end of 2021-22? Uh, is that who he's going to be when he comes back, uh, you know, from the injury? You know, if, if he is, you know, like, Maybe you have the piece already. Um, you know what? What, what kind of uh, leaps will Caleb Banks and CJ Gunn make? Are, are you know are, are they going to get there? Trey Galloway. What's you know again? Is is there um, is there something left between where he is and where his ceiling is? Um, is there something still uh, another um, improvement that he can make? Obviously, you know he's going to be a rotation guy and he's going to make a difference. Um, so you know there's a lot of interesting pieces. You know Peyton Sparks. What does he bring to this situation? Um, you know Walker from Miami. You know, right? um, but they have a lot of interesting pieces. I don't know what they're going to be ultimately, um, but you know they have enough talent to have a puncher's chance. I, I think is the thing that you have to look at and say at this point. Again, Gabe Cubs, obviously, you mentioned. You know, Jakai Newton. How fast are those two guys going to make impacts? Um, you know, I, I I imagine Cups is going to be a really good backup five or backup five, backup one. Um, you know, behind Xavier Johnson, and you know, learn a lot and take the reins next. But is year. he somebody? Is he someone that can step over to the two? He's a really good shooter. Yes, yes, because I mean, I think you can make him do whatever you want, to, want him to do. What I and Indiana needs, Indiana needs production from can that. I spot. imagine him playing over Trey Galloway as a freshman. No, because Galloway. Well, as as a starter, no, but. I can, can see, I see him, him getting more minutes. Ball? Can I can I see him having a, a you know two points in there and and having Johnson and Cups together? Yes. Can I see him beating out Galloway for a starting job? No, because just the physicality, you know, and the energy and and everything else, uh, you know, Galloway. And Mike just, Mike has shown that he likes to use stay with his veterans if at all possible. He does. He does. And, and the fact that there aren't going to be very many of them, um, Galloway is going to have an edge there. You know, I, I just, I mean, the Galloway is going to come in with a lot of minutes, uh, a lot of games, a lot of, you know. Uh, Unless they fill this spot with this last roster opening that they have. Still. Galloway is going to get still, an advantage. Galloway is going to have an advantage. That we're like, we, we, we keep thinking someone's going to knock him off, and we've been wrong for how, how long now. Yeah. You know, well, like, you, I, I, I'm, I'm done underestimating Trey Galloway. Uh, yeah. If I have, I'm done. I'm finished. Uh, with that, and, and and shoot, how much of a better shooter did he become? Obviously, he didn't take a ton of them, um, but he hit, and that was the issue. If he would take more, uh, it would probably, yeah, I don't know. Be, I mean, he also, though, is not going to be a high volume guy, he's not like you, you got to keep in mind who somebody is. Like, you're Trey Galloway is not a step back crossover three point hitter, Trey is a guy who gets to catch and shoot three. OK, like Trey's not going to be a guy who gets you a jab step and a fadeaway and, and hits the type of threes that Jason Tatum was hitting yesterday. That's not Trey Galloway. Trey Galloway gets the ball off the swing and hits the open one. You know, like he could probably take more. There's probably more opportunities. But like that's not the three Trey Galloway hits. There are guys at the college level who hits that three. That's not Trey. That's not Trey Galloway, you know, but that's fine. Um, you know, just again, play high energy, attack the basket, attack the closeout. Um, you know, hit the, hit the three when it comes your way. Try to get your guys to be that guy, guy. Defend like a crazy person. Chase down rebounds. Play in transition. You know, and but again, have experience. You know, and defend and really, 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 really guard. Like I just, I just don't see how he comes out of the lineup. I don't compare it to you know just with what they're gonna have, um, with how young they're gonna be, especially just defensively. I just, I don't see how you take that guy out of the starting lineup. 